Hello again, and uh, my name is Mark Hoffman. I am the Small Foods Extension Specialist at NC State University, and this is the third part of our series on uh, muscadine pruning, training, and renovation. And today we will talk about vineyard renovation. So that is a uh, vine or vineyard renovation is, is a situation which probably most of uh, people uh, face in their vineyard at this point of time. Um, and um, we usually refer to vine renovation uh, if we do any cut that uh, cuts into like permanent old wood. Um, that's probably at the moment the most common mode of action. So we really can like, there are two really major scenarios in vineyard renovation and commercial muscadine vineyards, which we face every year. And the most, by far the most common scenario is that antlers needs to be rejuvenated. So under antlers, we, we, we uh, refer to antlers as like really long spurs. You have a lot of young wood and fruiting wood coming out at the top of an antler. Um, uh, just for demonstration purposes, this is how it looks in, 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 in other grapevines. You do have a similar scenario in muscadines as well. And uh, a very good way to, to uh, do this is not to cut off the antler directly here, but to force uh, wood in uh, to force uh, positions down in, in the in the dormant wood to grow by cutting off the uh, the the fresh wood at, at the top of the antler. So instead of cutting the entire antler off, which creates again a very big wound, you want to first force uh, a new wood coming out uh, on the base of your of your of your antler. And the way to do this is by cutting off the entire uh, new wood with respect to the basal bud, as we learned in our pruning session, you never cut through the basal bud. Uh, so you're gonna do this uh, and that will uh, tell the wine that I, oh, I don't have enough space to grow. So um, this wine will then uh, push some dormant buds in the lower regions of your antler. And then you're gonna have to repeat that process until you are at the base and can grow a new spur position. Um, and then the best case scenario would have come, something coming out down here. So now I made a small video on how uh, you, can, you can do that on a young vine. It's a little bit easier, but often, as I said, you get into this problem very early on. So if you do have a young vine and you see that problem already, um, uh, you, can, you can see that here in this video. And I hope this works. And uh, it does not work. That's great. Um, let me see why that is not working. That is so ridiculous. All right, so this should work. There you go. So um, this is a video which, which we put on YouTube. And this is a young wine where you have uh, one, two, three, four, or five butts. And uh, last year, we had only growth in the first two positions, which is very common. If you do leave too many butts on your first year growth, it's very common. Very difficult to come back from. And as I said, long spurs should be avoided in the first place because otherwise you grow into space as we, as we see, saw in our last webinar. But um, there are two options how to restore this on, on a young muscular environment. So in this case, you only have growth on position four and five. So the only, the only way to choose from is like you keep your position four and you cut off position five. And I only kept two nodes there because I do want to push um, that position to, to break uh, uh, in a lower position. And then you would repeat this until you have something coming out of the basal bud. If you already have something coming out of the basal bud, like in this position, you can remove the entire spur, you leave wood for desiccation, and you leave a cup, you leave three buds to, to develop your new spur position. So that is, that is a way to come back from. Uh, the second scenario is to, uh, to um, uh, renovate part of the cordon. And that is something which uh, a lot of people don't want to do. And it's often, often a, a question whether or not you want to do it. Um, often, if you do have a lot of dead wood and a lot of not very well performing uh, positions, then that is a good sign for you to renovate this, the cordon. Um, it's a relatively easy process as long as you have good wood uh, on uh, closer to the trunk. So um, as long as your desiccation doesn't go all the way to the trunk, you can renovate your cordon relatively easily. And the way to do this is, and this is a very real life example, we also have like an antler or two antlers really, which you want to get rid of. Here we do have some stuff from the basal butt coming off. So we do exactly the procedure which I showed in this video. 
And then on the other side, we do also have stuff coming off, but we do also have this dead wood in, in, our, in our rest of the corn. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first reduce the antler and then we're gonna leave two of our butt positions, one for the new position of the antler and the other one we use to develop our new corn. Um, so if you only have this one here, then you only use this one to develop the new corn and you will not, you will lose this position here, for, uh, uh, for example. But this is the way, the correct way to renovate uh, a, a new corn. Um, in many cases, vine renovation cuts are important to, uh, and it's, you have to remove that wood. They can, uh, they can host diseases. Uh, and then if you do the right pruning techniques, you do not have to make a lot of large cuts in the first place because you control the growth of your spurs from the very beginning. Um, another uh, uh, thing which I see often is in young vines that you have uh, that you have uh, positions that are too crowded. Um, and again, uh, uh, those positions uh, can be, uh, uh, you can have, for example, uh, six, positions on a young vine on one foot of corn. This is the case in this scenario. We have like six spurs on, this is like a three-year-old wine, a four-year-old wine, and those are too many spurs on this position. So we usually, as I said, we usually recommend two to three spurs. Um, so in this case scenario, what you can do is pretty easy. You just fix those spurs and just keep an equal distance between the spurs that you want to, that you want to keep. It's not the best way to do it, but the younger the wine is and the smaller those spur positions are, the easier it is to do. And uh, we usually want to keep, again, in this case, we kept three positions per foot of corn. This is kind of what you want to have. Um, all right, so um, as a take home here, a long-term goal is to, uh, to um, uh, keep healthy permanent wood. Again, by correct training, correct pruning, you can get to this long-term goal. And, uh, and again, make cuts in a way to keep the healthy wood, so give it space to heal. And uh, mechanical pruning is a good option if it is rotated uh, with manual pruning as well. Uh, please follow us on Instagram under the Very Berry Lab, but also look at our great portal uh, and uh, look at smallfruits.org. This entire webinar is sponsored by the Southern uh, Regional Small Fruits Consortium. And... Um, look at our muscadine production guide and uh, i hope we have some questions in the webinar and thank you very much for your attention